Okay, good morning. Um, we're going to call to order the Ventura County Air Pollution Control District Board meeting of Tuesday, May 13th. Could we please stand for Pledge of the Flag? And over heart, ready to begin. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nobody's here. We'll move this back. So Mr. Point and I don't have plain easies. <laughs> I'm not. Okay, next up, minutes. We have the minutes of the meeting of March 11th, April 8th, before the board. Move the approval. Motion is second for approval of minutes. Any objection? Hearing, seeing none. Uh, thank you. They are approved. We'll move forward. Public and consent agenda comments. Item three for folks who wish to speak to this board on items not on the agenda. I don't have any cards. Okay, we'll move on. Next up we have um, item number four, board comments. Comments of the board. Ms. Parks? I just want to comment. Um, Supervisor Foy had mentioned at our supervisor meeting that tonight was the, um, at the Reagan Library there honoring all the young men who became Eagle Scouts. And I want to point out that Mr. Kwong had his son also become an Eagle Scout. So oh. congratulations. Congratulations. That's great. Mr. Morgan. Yes, uh, just a little update on this hydrogen cell. Where's my friend down there? What's going on? You have a little bit in, in the paper about uh, the ports. Have, you're looking at LNG and hydrogen cell vehicles being converted. The trucks, 16,000 of them being converted because uh, they're under a suit right now. Uh, and because of all the smog that's going out of there because of 16,000 trucks a day. Well, the, the, um, what, what the problem was with, with hydrogen cell is stations. But now I'm working in conjunction with uh, Doug Failing and talking to him about using some of his weight stations and some other others as possible uh, places for trucks to come and refill hydrogen fuel or LNG. Uh, he's very excited about it and said, yes, he thinks that could be a possibility. So we're working on that. Maybe we may be able to get, get those trucks on, on, on the hydrogen cell with no smog. Okay. Just clean water. The there you go. <laughs> I, would, I would only add that... Um, one of the big issues has always been fire departments locally, and, and so fortunate I was able to get one of our battalion chiefs who's actually driving around in a hydrogen, the BMW, it's been, and uh, for about a week, and just working through it and getting comfortable with it and recognizing you're driving around on four wheels and a hydrogen bomb. So hopefully we can get through all that, and the public, there'll be a public showing of that, and uh, I think as we get the public more comfortable with it, obviously the costs are, 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 are way, way, way up there. But, you know, with more people and more opportunities, things happen. One of the dreams certainly is we start stripping methane. You can get hydrogen, and we can do that at our landfills and some of these other opportunities as we go forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other comments? I just commented in our last newsletter. There was a wonderful picture of the hybrid car from 1917. 1917? 1917. It's a great picture. Okay, we'll move ahead then. Uh, there is not a need for closed session today, correct? Correct. Item number six in our, in our regular agenda is a public hearing for approval of our 2007 air quality management plan. And good morning, sir. Chair Long, members of the board, I'm Mike Yegas, air pollution control officer. The new air quality management plan is a roadmap for attainment of the federal 0 .08 part per million ozone standard pursuant to the Federal Clean Air Act. It will also satisfy the mandate to update our plan to comply with the California Clean Air Act. The plan contains an inventory of reactive organic gases or reactive organic compounds and nitrogen oxides emissions throughout the county and projects the effects of growth and control measures on these source categories. The control strategies include both local or APCD and state California Air Resources Board control measures to reduce emissions. The plan also shows how we will make reasonable further progress to attain the standard. It contains an attainment demonstration based on computer modeling and emission trends along with contingency measures in case we don't meet the standard by the target date of 2012. 
Uh, this slide really shows the extent of the smog problem in California. And it's based on the U.S. EPA's oris original designations with the 0 0.08 uh, standard. It lists Ventura County as moderate, along with Mojave Desert and Antelope Valley. And as you can see, Sacramento and, and San Joaquin Valley are listed as serious, with the south coast as severe. All of these areas have needed to bump up to higher classifications, just like we needed to bump up to serious here in Ventura County. And I have advised your board before that these original uh, classifications from EPA were unrealistic. As a serious area, our control measures must be implemented prior to our attainment target of 2012, and we must show attainment by the end of smog season in 2012. You've seen this data before, but it really highlights the success story we're seeing here in Ventura County. While population continues to increase, the county ozone levels continue to drop. The standard we are working to achieve with this current plan is denoted by the yellow line with the yellow triangles and as you can see we're getting quite close. I want to give your board an overview of the state implementation plan development process. First you monitor the air. Then an emissions inventory is developed and projections based on growth and control measures are made. This data is then utilized in computer models to estimate an attainment date. Constro control strategies are then implemented via rulemaking, permitting, and our inspections. Then monitoring determines if the goals have been met or if you need to revise the plan. And this is how we develop a comprehensive blueprint for air quality improvement. This slide shows the projected decline in both reactive organic gases and nitrogen oxide over time. As you can see, the rate of reductions do level off as control measures are implemented. However, I want to point out that the, the plan does not include reductions from the state's pesticide program, that, which went into effect on May 1st of this year, due to legal uncertainty on whether or not that rule is going to stay in effect or not. We also expect additional reductions from the state strategies, which will really kick in in force in the 2015 time frame. Uh, this slide uh, shows the source category trends, and when you look at the orange line, you can really see that on-road vehicles are dropping, uh, the green other mobile sources, and th those are the state strategies really kicking in. Um, when you look at solvent use, you can see that we kind of dropped about as low as we can go in 2008, and now you're seeing an effect of where our control measures have come into effect, but you're seeing a slight effect of growth there. Uh, petroleum industry. Uh, looks level. Our controls have uh, basically driven those emissions down dramatically. And, you, and then you, right behind that petroleum industry, unfortunately, you see the yellow line, which is pesticide application. And you see a slight increase, but like I said, the plan does not account for the current Department of Pesticide Regulation uh, rule that just went into effect. And this slide breaks down the ROG emissions, and these are projected in 2012 by source category. And this is what things should look like when we're in attainment. And as you can see, one of the interesting things here is as the Air District, we have regulatory authority for a small slice of OCS, the offshore platforms, a goodly chunk of solvent use, and the petroleum industry. But even you really look at uh, the rest of it, it comes down to state measures. And of course, our incentive programs do play into the mobile sources. Uh, next up you can see the emission trends by category for nitrogen oxide. You see the dramatic drop in on-road vehicles, uh, mobile sources, and other mobile equipment due to the state strategies. Uh, slight decline in fuel combustion and the combustion industry, that's a largely uh, district regulations and when you look at electric utilities you see a slight increase and that's because rule 59 is state of the art uh, for the power plants but we put those controls in and now you're seeing demand growth at the power plants and then you see that blue line climbing and that's the OCS and right there is your knocks from the 
marine vessels starting to increase due to the increased shipping in the channel. And this is another way to look at it for the source category emissions in 2012. And as you can see, uh, the OCS is the major player. And then the district basically having uh, regulatory authority with petroleum industry, other fuel combustion, electric utilities, and then a very slender piece of the OCS pie with the offshore platforms. I'm going to step through the con control strategies. On the local controls, last month your board adopted two control measures that are part of this plan to reduce reactive organic compounds. We have two more uh, that will be coming f before your board. The plan also includes transportation control measures, such as ride sharing, transit improvements, traffic flow improvements, and land use measures. Transport Transportation conformity is the process by which we're assured that new highway projects will not delay attainment past 2012. The plan also includes a demonstration that our regulations meet federal reasonably available control technology uh, guidelines. Our new source review rules exceed the requirements for a serious area. And of course, our incentive programs such as Carl Moyer, the school bus program, agricultural assistance are also included in the plan. And the plan also includes some further study measures uh, that may be feasible to make some further reductions. The state strategies, however, are going to provide the bulk of the emission reductions to achieve the standard. This slide shows the components of the state strategy, and as you can see, they're going about they're going after just about every source category that moves and they're doing an excellent job. One thing I want to point out is, as I said, they came into, they really, the bulk of their reductions kick in in 2015 and that's because the state strategy was really designed. The genesis behind it, the genesis behind it was to assist San Joaquin and South Coast in attaining their goals, which are more in the 2018 and out time frame with this current standard. But it's still an extremely aggressive program that is going to help us out significantly. The plan contains a demonstration that emissions will be reduced by an average of at least 3% per year during the period 2002 to 2012. It also sets emission budgets for transportation conformity purposes, and these are the ones where you would compare your growth in vehicle mile travel and, and highway projects to and these transportation budgets are developed with significant input. Basically, they are developed by SCAG. <laughs> Appendix D of the plan includes photochemical modeling, which is computer modeling based on emission trends and meteorology. And this modeling was performed for our district by the California Air Resources Board and staff at the South Coast District for most of Southern California. Here are the results of the computer modeling. It shows we're going to be right on the fence in Simi and Ojai, with Ojai being our most problematic location. The results are very close to the standard. I need to explain that. I said it's a 0 .08 part per million standard, which is only two significant digits, which means effectively it's a 0 .084 standard. And you can see how close we are in Simi and Ojai to that standard. When modeling results are this close, EPA has you looked at other trends in what's called the weight of evidence. These other factors include monitoring and emission trends. If, you, if you, you've already seen that our exceedance days are down, our design values are down, the mean of the top 38 hour levels are down, the clean areas of the county continue to expand, and our emission trends are down. In addition, the reductions in South Coast mean that the transport coming in from that basin into Ventura County is also getting much cleaner over time. Now I'm on to the California Clean Air Act portion of the plan. It includes the trends I've already discussed, and one of the key components here is the review of every feasible measure. We do this work on a continuous basis by reviewing our existing rules. Lastly, we are required to identify 
any deficiencies in our California plan, none of which were identified. Now, this data is prepared by the California Air Resources Board for us, and it shows the dramatic decrease in, in exposure, both on a population-weighted basis and on an area-weighted basis. And th this is the slide that sometimes gives me heartburn when we, when we get that F from the, uh, the Lung Association on an annual basis because things have dramatically improved in this county. The district provided two public comment periods on this AQMP, and they totaled 66 days, well above the required 30 days. The final draft has been posted on our website and has been downloaded 430 times, but we've received no comments. Of course, the plan was provided both to CARB and EPA, and we've receive no comments from either party. Therefore, staff is your, recommending your board approve the plan, adopt the negative declaration, and authorize the chair to sign the resolution. We will then submit the plan to CARB, who will then forward it on to EPA as a portion of the California State Implementation Plan. Real quickly, I'm going to touch on an emerging issue. This plan is going to help us with the .084 standard, but in March of this year, EPA adopted a new ozone standard of 0.075. What you see there is that an additional significant digit means this time we will not have the issue with the rounding. The standard is 0.075 and, th and that's where it's going to be. It's not going to be 0.08, effectively 0.084. So that's going to be a nice clarification. Uh, then this is because the new monitoring equipment is, is much more accurate, although it does require us to do additional <laughs> calibrations. And as you can see, our next plan is going to be due in 2013. Uh, under the, the .08 standard, uh, you can see the uh, non-attainment areas in the country. You can really see the extent of the problem in California, uh, areas of Texas, and the, nor the northeast seaboard. This is what it's going to look like under the new standard a dramatic increase in non-attainment areas. And this is going to be the challenge. This is EPA's projection on the remaining non-attainment areas in 2020 with the new standard. As you can see, we'll be one of those areas still working towards it. Uh, that's all I have, and I'll be uh, happy to answer questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, are there questions? Mr. Morgan. I have a couple of them. Number one, our biggest polluter is the offshore, of course, the ships <coughs> showed that on there. Yes, 32 percent of the, uh, um, anyway, of the pollutants come from that offshore. And, and we've already lost in a suit trying to get them to maintain or control that. Is there any hope of that being controlled in the future? Because that will affect our county greatly. Well, well, the suit that was recently lost was the California Air Resources Board right. regulation to try to control uh, the level of sulfur in, in, in the fuel in these vessels. Uh, as you're aware, we've been, as a matter of fact, there's a letter in the, in the packet where mm -hmm. we're lobbying to support a bill both in the House and the Senate mm -hmm. to reduce emissions from marine vessels. I know the Senate is just taking up uh, the Maripol uh, Treaty right now, where well, at least we'll get some reductions, and that's going to help us set sulfur limits for these vessels basically on the whole West Coast. So th there'll be some assistance there. But that work... We've really got to work with EPA and really got to press EPA to work with the International Maritime Air Organization to reduce emissions from these vessels. It, it is critical. The other one I have a question on is, if, uh, as you mentioned, when we had the fires going last year, that they count that pollutant, that the pollutant from fires into that count. Well, actually what we do is we tag that data as an exceptional event. EPA then reviews it and most likely it's pulled out. So that's not in these totals of our... Oh, no, that's particulate matter, a separate issue. So but yes, okay. generally they pull that out because they realize that is not an anthropogenic, you know, not a man-made issue that the air district can, or any regulatory agency can deal with. I just remember you said in the paper <clears throat> that there are so many days that the, there are so many pollutants from, you know, in, the, in the air, and fire days were some of those. Well, for particulate matter, certainly. Yes. That, that's when we get the highest in... Okay. But those we do tag that data, and then EPA does have a what's called an exceptional event uh, okay. policy. Okay. 
<laughs> Other questions? Um, I don't have, let me see, no, I don't have a card on this item. Is there anyone in the public wishing to speak to this item, which is item six, the Air Quality Management Plan 2007? Okay. Well, Madam Chair. I don't have cards. I'll yes, sir. I'll go ahead and move the recommended action two through six. It's a motion and a second. Any objections? Hearing none, it is adopted. Thank you, sir. I know that was a, a short presentation for an awful lot of work. Yeah, I, I really want to. And, and excellent work, too. I, I thank you and staff. Yeah, I really want to thank our planning staff. They, yeah. they, they really carried the ball on this, and there were a lot of delays. And people do worry about South Coast and San Joaquin a lot more than they worry about getting the modeling done on time for Ventura County. But mm -hmm. uh, they stuck with it, and, and they put out a great work product. Yeah. yeah. And we'll serve us well in the future. Thank you. All right. Um, we'll move on to item number seven, which is the public hearing regarding proposed adoption of new rule 55 fugitive dust. Mr. Vegas. All right. Here's an example of the type of dust or particulate matter source that Rule 55 would address. And here, here's a construction operation in Ohio, And this is the kind of situation that can lead to a complaint. And under our current regulatory scheme with an, an opacity rule and nuisance, this is very difficult for enforcement staff to actually uh, take action on. Senate Bill 656 required the district to reduce emissions of particulate matter as the county does not meet the state's particulate matter standard. We do meet the federal standards, however. Our smog control rules for nitrogen oxides and ROC have already reduced particulate matter from industrial facilities. So we're now looking at construction, bulk material handling facilities, unpaved roads, etc. And this rule is needed to protect public health. Particulate matter leads to increased hospital admissions. There's been studies, and they show, you know, I've seen this wonderful study from Pittsburgh, and they, they show the particulate matter peak days, and they show the hospital admission days, and, and they track. It's just amazingly how close they track. And the other uh, major concern is particulate matter can lead to increased uh, premature death. And I was just at a talk with uh, epidemiologists, and, and we have always understood that particulate matter leads to an inflation inflammation response in the body, which is real tough on people with cardiovascular disease. But they also, it can also affect how quickly blood coagulates, which is even more dangerous to people with cardiovascular disease. The rule will also provide our compliance staff with an additional method to deal with dust issues. This rule was subject to an adoption deadline of December of last year. However, it's been delayed to allow us to to develop an environmental impact report for this rule. Staff first proposed a categorical exemption from CEQA, but this was questioned by industry. Based on the emissions from diesel engines in watering trucks and street sweepers, our position is that the dramatic reductions in particulate matter by using these type of equipment more than offsets the collateral emissions from the watering trucks and the street sweepers. They also raise the issue if you watered, uh, let's say, a load of fine sand that was going to be loaded into a truck, there would be a weight increase. I mean, you wouldn't water it a whole lot, but th there could be a slight weight increase, and that could lead to an increased truck trip, you know, based on how many loads. And once again, our position is the reduction in particulate matter dramatically outweighs those collateral emissions. However, because the collateral emissions can result in a significant impact, a statement of overriding consideration is needed for this rule action. Staff is estimating a significant reduction in particulate matter from the rule, six tons per day. As you can see, the cost effectiveness of the rule is below the best available cost effectiveness guidelines adopted by your board in 1988. This rule would apply to approximately 40 bulk material handling facilities in the county, as well as earth moving, construction, demolition, and storage piles, and some unpaved roads. 
This slide deals with the issue of maintenance operations for groundwater recharge basins, where they need to break up an algal mat that forms in the first inch or two of the soil. And this maintenance needs to be done on dry soil and could create a dust level that would not be possible, where it would not be possible to comply with this rule. To resolve this issue, which was raised by representatives of United Water, staff has proposed an exemption for this type of operation. I should point out when recharge basins are actually functioning when they're wet, uh, obviously the dust emissions are much lower than even natural vegetation. Also, the United Water will continue to be subject to the unpaved uh, road portions of the rule and the track out portions. Because this is a substantial change to the version of the rule we made available for the 30 day public notice, uh, the hearing needs to be continued till June 10th. And I'm also in the June 10th board letter, I will correct the fact that the actual recommendation is to adopt Rule 55 along with the change uh, that we proposed for United Water in Attachment 7. You said in regards to that dust thing on the on trucks, when you talked about the particulates that come off the trucks, mm -hmm. and you'd rather, and you want to water them. That, that's one method. R really, when you look at how, how we're asking them, that, that was something they brought up. But really, what we're asking in the rule for bulk material is when they load that truck to either maintain it, what we call a six-inch freeboard, meaning don't load it above a level six inches from the top of the truck you know, the carrier bed, there, which dramatically reduces the dust or to cover it. So we, we are, I mean, watering is one option, but the freeboard ratio or covering it would suffice. Well, I was just thinking if you water it, you add weight to that truck. You talked about an extra load. You talk about the fuel cost and everything else. Exactly. You talk about that many more trucks on the road. You add a whole lot by that solution seems uh, using water. very expensive using water everything else versus some type of a covering that may be less expensive plus exactly and that's why you purchase and everything else and all those things yeah, yeah actually actually to me the issue the major issue was really the actual watering trucks at a construction site etc or or the street sweepers i didn't see people really wetting loads especially once you're on the road it's going to dry rather that's why dramatically anyway, <laughs> so i don't know how good it is yeah in summary we develop a rule that will address the state yeah, mandate and reduce mike on that same point uh, uh, I think I asked this last time we talked about this matter too. Uh, construction sites. Um, it seems they monitor, they water, they, they do a good job watering as long as they know they're being monitored. And we really don't have the resources to monitor, do we? We do have resources that are available, and it's probably going to be largely driven by complaints. You know, a neighbor sees the yeah. dust coming. That right. It's going to give our inspectors an ability to go out there and issue a notice. Of so on that them. note, you drive to other communities, and what comes to mind is the desert, the uh, Palm, Palm Desert area, and they have very clear signs on any construction site that says if you see dust coming from the site and they have a number to call. Is that something we've considered to, uh, because I think it, it does go to the residents, someone who wouldn't call, if they see that sign and they see dust coming, they're going to pick up a cell phone and that's certainly something we can consider. It's probably an inexpensive way to monitor. Yeah, it is. Doesn't it doesn't involve uh, staff. It, it basically just involves some cardboard signs. I mean, um, we could certainly do, yeah, that would certainly make a lot of sense on some of the large operations. Mm -hmm. Certainly, where. Thank you. That's a good idea. <laughs> well, in summary, we've developed a rule that will address the state mandate and reduce particulate matter emissions. The control measures are readily available and cost effective. Our regulatory approach should lower the cost of compliance by listing control measures instead of requiring plans that would be reviewed by district staff. In addition, if a facility implements certain control measures, the chance of a notice of violation being issued is greatly reduced. For example, if an operator had a large storage pile but provided wind sheltering for that pile and then uh, under high wind conditions uh, they exceeded the opacity standard, they, we wouldn't issue a notice of violation because <coughs> they've already used best management practices. That's all I have. I'll do my best to answer questions, and our expert on the program, Mr. Stan Cowan, is here also. 
Okay, and again, the action before us is to continue this public hearing till June 10th before we take action. And I have one card submitted, but are there any questions from the board members? Jeff, I'll, I'll ask it right now, that, uh, or, or point it out. It's just, just the, how interesting it is that the timing this morning on the radio uh, were reports about how they have finally now made a link between the amount of particulate matter in the air and the number of blood clots and heart attacks that are happening in that area because they're saying that particular matter is passing through the lungs and then mm -hmm. clogging up and creating little blood clots that then head off and cause strokes and, and heart attacks and stuff. So uh, if staff knows anything about that before we come back June 10th, uh, that would be helpful mm -hmm. information uh, as further justification for people this. People uh, horses yeah. back in the desert. That's right. Other questions? I, I have a card first. John Dickinson from the United Water Conservation yes. District. Good afternoon. Yes. I'm John Dickinson, Engineering Manager with United Water. Um, and I just wanted to give a little background on the uh, new proposal in here. Uh, first, United Water apologizes for being a late player in this process. Um, we had some internal communications that didn't work the way they should have. Um, but given that, I wanted to point out that, that um, United Water has always been dust sensitive um, regarding our activities, primarily because most of our neighbors are ag enterprises and in in days past, particularly orchard owners were very sensitive to dust that we would produce, so we always tried to work with our neighbors regarding that. Um, and as I pointed out, there's really no way to get our groundwater recharge ponds to function um, uh, efficiently without creating dust at some point in their, in their operation. Although, as uh, Mr. Villegas pointed out, um, the overall integral of dust production from the facilities is probably less than background. Um, we wanted to commend APCD staff, um, uh, Mr. Cowan and Mr. Villegas particularly, um, for taking our comments to heart and we worked this issue out mm -hmm. and we hope this is acceptable and we would support this rule with these provisions. Thank you okay. very much. Very good and thank you for coming to make those comments. Okay, again, we're going to continue this public hearing to June 10th. Um, if there's no other questions by the board members, the action would be to do that. There's a motion and a second. Hearing no further objection or comments, we will do that and, and be back to this on the 10th. And I, too, would like to thank staff for working with United Water. Um, I, it was brought to my attention, and, and I, they went off and did their good work along with the leadership of the board. So thank you. This will be back to us on the 10th. Thank you. Item number eight, um, amend funding for lower emission school bus retrofit project. Good morning. Chair Long, members of the board, I'm Stan Cowan, uh, APCD engineer. Uh, this item is to uh, amend an existing grant agreement with uh, Durham School Services. Uh, this grant originally was for $315,000 uh, as part of the lower mission school bus program. It is used to retrofit uh, existing school buses with, with uh, control devices called particulate traps. Uh, this equipment controls PM emissions from diesel exhaust by about 85%. And <clears throat> for this particular grant, which was uh, awarded by your board about a year ago, uh, we, d we have done uh, 19 school buses already retrofitted with the, the passive traps. Uh, unfortunately, some of the school buses, the temperature profiles in the exhaust uh, preclude using what's called the passive traps. These passive traps regenerate automatically just by the exhaust temperature. The soot that builds up in the traps, I won't get too technical, um, the soot that builds up in the traps is actually uh, burned away by the exhaust temperature. But for certain buses, this doesn't work. And so what we need to do here is use a different type of trap. It's a, a, an active trap, clear device. It's more expensive, but what, the way it works is it regenerates using electrical heating. And so that's the reason we've come back for this particular item. Um, we wanted to do as many buses as we can with the money that's available to us from ARB. And we're asking that the grant be uh, amount be increased from 315 to 340 thousand dollars 
and to um, retrofit up to 28 school buses. Uh, we ask that you uh, amend the, um, the pro this particular grant, uh, authorize the APCO to amend the grant agreement, and to authorize the auditor controller to make the transactions in, in number item number three. And that's all I have. I'll happy to answer any questions about that. Are there any questions? I Ms. have Parks. one. Um, since it's not a passive system, does it take more um, maintenance or operation crews to utilize it? Uh, there's actually maintenance for both the passive and active traps. The, um, the units collect uh, ash, which is not consumed. So they, they have to be de-ashed, both types of systems. So there is that maintenance that's required for but it's both. Not, you, know, you don't have to do this electrical hook up to heat it. And well, that's what you do for the, for the active traps. Right, so that, that's what I was referring to. Is that um, a pretty intensive, maintenance intensive? Uh, not really. They just, mm -hmm. uh, they just park the, bus, the school bus and they plug it in okay. and overnight and that takes care of itself. That takes care of itself right. All right, thank you. Yeah. Sounds like a self cleaning oven. Self cleaning? <laughs> yeah. <See>? Exactly. <laughs> Question? Others? Okay, thank you. Um, Motion a second to uh, approve the recommended actions. Any objections? Seeing and hearing none, so ordered. Thank you, sir. And item number nine yeah. is to participate in the 2008-2011 California Lower Emission School Bus Replacement Retrofit Program. Yeah, the, the Lower Emission School Bus Program, which has been active since 2001, is a great opportunity to reduce the exposure uh, uh, of diesel exhaust to school kids. And uh, in the past, we've, re we've replaced... 24 older school, uh, older diesel buses with 18 CNG buses and a few uh, low emission diesel buses as well. What we're asking to, uh, today is to participate in the 2008 program. Uh, it's based on the Proposition 1B funding, uh, which authorized $200 million statewide for school bus replacements and retrofits. Uh, the allocation uh, was adopted by the Air Resources Board this past March, we were allocated $5 million to do uh, both school bus replacements and retrofits. And we will be working closely with the school districts and the Air Resources Board to do a fair and, and try to do as many buses as we, as we can and follow the guidelines that are out, out, outlined by the ARB. So uh, in this case, we would ask that you authorize uh, participation approval and also um, authorize uh, the resolution that's attached to this uh, item and authorize the chair to sign the resolution. I have to answer any questions. Okay, questions. Okay. So motion and a second to adopt the recommended actions. Any objection to that? Hearing none, seeing none, so ordered. Thank you. Thank you. It's an excellent program. Item 10, proposed amendment to contract for laboratory services, Air Pollution Control District, Sacramento Metropolitan Air Quality Management District. Morning. Good morning. Chair Long, members of the board. I'm Keith Duvall, representing the Air Pollution Control District. The district currently operates an air monitoring program to collect and analyze hydrocarbon samples under the Environmental Protection Agency's Photochemical Assessment, Assessment Monitoring Stations program. As part of that program, the district operates a gas chromatography laboratory to analyze collected samples and manage the data. In March 2006, your board approved a two-year contract with the Sacramento Metropolitan AQMD for our staff to provide laboratory services <clears throat> for hydrocarbon samples collected in the Sacramento area. The Sacramento district has requested that we extend that contract for another two years. Under the contract, the district charges the Sacramento District $158 for each sample that we analyze, which is sufficient to cover our costs. Uh, at this rate, we expect to receive between $35,000 and $45,000 per year from Sacramento. We recommend that your board authorize the Air Pollution Control Officer to sign the attached contract amendment with the Sacramento AQMD. Be glad to answer any questions. Okay, other questions? Motion and a second. Any objection? Or hearing, seeing none, thank you. And so ordered. Thank you. Item number 11, fiscal year additional budget adjustment. Currently, the board receives and manages past-due grants such as our Carl Moyer, Agricultural Assistance, School Bus, and Lawnmower 
buyback programs. In January of this year, your board approved a transfer of revenues and appropriations associated with these grants into a special revenue fund. Today, we're requesting approval to process the necessary accounting transaction to transfer revenue and appropriations associated with the administration funds for these grants. Actually, when these grants come in, uh, the staff working on them are actually paid out of administrative funds, not in essence our district's general fund. In addition, district staff is requesting your board to approve a recommendation to establish a budget appropriation and revenue for one pass-through grant for the Wyoming School District. The budget appropriation for this grant was established in fiscal year 2006-07, but the contract was not signed until fiscal year 07-08. Consequently, the encumbrance for the Wyoming School District grant was established in fiscal year 07-08 without a corresponding budget appropriation. The funding for the pass-through grant, however, exists in our trust account, and this transfer would not have any effect financially on the district. Okay, questions? I don't see any. Okay, it's a pleasure to the board. Motion and a second. Any objection? Hearing, seeing none. So ordered. Thank you. That takes care of that. Our correspondence agenda. Is there a motion to receive and file? A motion and a second to receive and file. Seeing no objection. That completes our agenda. Correct? And we are back on the 10th. That's right. We're back two, twice in June. The 10th and the 24th. Yes, sir, Mr. Brennan. Madam Chair, before you adjourn, I apologize when I mentioned it earlier. I just wanted to thank staff for all these wonderful proposed budget. The, obviously, the annual financial report, I think, was great. I wanted to appreciate getting those. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody else feels the same way I do, but there's an awful lot of mail and paper products we get from APCD, and I know it's how we do business. I'm just wondering if we can look maybe in the next year coming up of how we maybe use a little less paper and the time and the printing and just all that as a whole. I mean, maybe as a CD we get sent out or, I don't know, a lot of us use that and maybe they're even starting to double siding as uh, Supervisor Park said. But I, I'm just trying to think about it just a little differently. I know myself personally, I'm trying to do paper. that on my own personal. We're trying to do that on our council. We're trying to just get that through the culture of what we do. And I know some of the folks, most of the state board hearings I go to, everybody's working off a laptop that has their agendas and everything on it. Obviously, that's very difficult to do here. I recognize that. but And I appreciate getting all the information. I'm just wondering if as the year goes through next year, maybe we can look at the way and the culture and how we do things and see if there's a, perhaps a better way. i just let you know we're, we're actually updating all our mailing lists right now. We, we've got a new management assistance for in, in, in the district, and one of the things we're going to be looking at is right now, obviously the board needs to get the board packet, and I'm going to send a memo to you, but basically let you know, you know some of the workshop agendas and materials, I think we'll, we'll stop sending that to you. And then I'll pull the board on who wants to receive the advisory committee uh, materials. And we can save a lot of paper just mm -hmm. on those simple changes. Well, I appreciate that as a start. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's great. I think eventually most, most of us are going to get comfortable with paperless and working off a laptop. But until then, we'll certainly work to improve. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, no further comments? Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Appreciate the work.